This video discuss foot joints, ligaments and foot inversion and eversion. Foot joints involve between the tarsal bones, metatarsals and phalanges and among several foot joints, we'll discuss about three most important joints. Those are subtalar or telocalcaneal joint and telocalcaneo navicular joint and the calcaneo cuboid joint. Telocalcaneo navicular joint, you can see in this picture, it's a complicated joint and it's also synovial. It's a ball and socket variety. So this is the joint highlighted in orange color in this picture. This is the medial aspect of the foot. This joint is ball and socket variety. The head of the talus act as the ball and socket is formed by the navicular, calcaneus and the spring ligament. Spring ligament is between the sustenticulum tali and the navicular located in the plant aspect. This ligament also contribute to the telocalcaneo navicular joint. So the part of under surface of talus head articulating with the upper surface of sustenticulum tali and the body of calcaneus and the spring ligament. Actually in the spring ligament this articulation happens with the fibrocartilaginous upper part of this ligament and also the front of the talus head articulates with the navicular bone. So the whole joint has a single synovial cavity and the whole joint with its synovial cavity called talocalcaneo navicular joint. It also has a single joint capsule. Then we will discuss what is the subtalar joint or telocalcaneal joint. This is the joint. It located behind the telocalcaneo navicular joint and it's also synovial where the upper surface of calcaneus articulate with the under surface of talus. In the bottom picture, you can also see the subtalar joint highlighted in blue, this joint. And the next one is calcaneo cuboid joint, this joint. It is also a synovial joint surrounding by a capsule and it is between the front of the calcaneus and the back of the cuboid bone. Long and short plantar ligaments located on plantar aspect of this joint. Now the calcaneo cuboid joint and the telonavicular part of the telocalcaneo navicular joint form the mid tarsal joint. This is the mid tarsal joint. Now in inversion and eversion, simple gliding movement occur in the calcaneo cuboid joint. Then we will discuss what are the ligaments. First we will discuss the plantar plantar ligaments. There are two plantar ligaments, long and short. Now this is the short plantar ligament or the plantar calcaneo cuboid ligament. As its name explains, it's between the calcaneous bone and the cuboid. It extends from the anterior tubercle of calcaneus to behind the posterior ridge of cuboid. In the cuboid bone, there is a groove made by the anterior and posterior ridges and behind its posterior ridge where the short plantar ligament attached. And this one is covered by the long plantar ligament. So this is the long plantar ligament. So the long plantar ligament attached anterior to calcaneal tuberosity to anterior tubercle and extend forward to cover the short plantar ligament. This attached to the anterior and posterior ridges of cuboid bone and convert the groove into a tunnel. Now within this tunnel where the peroneus longus tendon pass. You can see clearly the attachment of the ligament here in this picture. Then this ligament extend forward and attach attached to the basis of central three metatarsal bones and this ligament is covered by the flexor accessorius or quadratus plantae muscle. This muscle, if you can remember, located in the second layer of the sole. Then the next one is plantar calcaneo navicular ligament or the spring ligament. It is located in the medial side. It is a key stabilizer of the medial longitudinal arch. It located between the anterior edge of sustenticulum tali, which is a bony projection of the calcaneus bone and plantar surface of navicular. It is a strong ligament and it has its fibrocartilaginous facet on its upper surface which is articulate with the head of talus. Bifurcate ligament also located on the lateral aspect. As its name explains, it has two limbs. It arises from the front of the tarsal sinus. This is the tarsal sinus. I will explain in my next slide. So it arises from the front of tarsal sinus as two limbs. It has medial limb which attached to the navicular bone and it lateral limb attached to the cuboid bone. This is the tarsal sinus. It's a small cylindrical canal located on lateral aspect between the talus and the calcaneus. Next ligament is cervical ligament also located on the lateral end of tarsal sinus. 
It is between the neck of talus and the upper surface of calcaneus. It stabilizes the subtalar joint. It is a crucial ligament which limits the inversion and can be injured in subtalar instability, which can lead to flat foot deformity. Then we'll talk about what are the movements which can occur in this mid tarsal and subtalar joint. So inversion and eversion is an important movement occur at subtalar and mid tarsal joints. This is the inversion. This is the medial side, and this is the lateral side of the foot. So, inversion is raising the medial board of the foot. So, it is associated with supination and the adduction of and also fully inverted foot is plantar flexed. So, it's plantar flex, adducted and supination. So, this is the eversion where raising of the lateral board of the foot. It is associated with pronation, abduction away from the midline and linked with dorsiflexion. So, what are the muscle contribution for these two movements? All muscles producing inversion and eversion attach to forefoot anterior to mid tarsal joint. So, inversion where the medial border of the foot raising up. So, the tendons uh, located more medially contribute to the inversion, namely tibialis anterior, tibialis posterior, assisted by extensor and flexor hallucis longus, uh, contribute to the inversion. And for eversion, muscles and tendons located laterally contribute. Those are peroneus longus, peroneus brevis and peroneus tertius. Then we'll briefly discuss what are the forefoot joints. Forefoot joints are tarsometatarsal joints between the tarsal bones, cuboid, nacular and cuneiforms and the metatarsals. So these are the joints. So we'll discuss the first tarsometatarsal joint between the medial cuneiform and the first metatarsal bone. It's a synovial and it has its own joint capsule and synovial membrane. It becomes hyperextended in flat foot and some movement possible in vertical plane. And then the second tarsometatarsal joint, this is between the intermediate cuneiform and the second metatarsal bone. It is an immobile joint. You can see this is somewhat tightly packed between the cuneiforms and the adjacent metatarsals. So base of the second metatarsal firmly fixed between anterior ends of the medial and lateral cuneiforms. That's why it's immobile. Then the first metatarsophalangeal joint. This is between the first metatarsal and the proximal phalanx of the big toe. It has its own clinical entity which is hallux valgus. I'll explain in next slide. So big toe doesn't have its dorsal extensor expansion or fibrous flexor shape. Long tendons are held in position by the deep fascia. Hallux valgus or valgus deformity is caused by the pressure from footwear or degenerative joint disease. So this is characterized by lateral deviation of big toe. You can easily remember this. L in valgus can indicate lateral deviation. This is common in female and the frequency increases with aging. So the first metatarsal shifts medially and the phalanges displace laterally. And the sesamoids associated with the first metatarsal also shift laterally. And pull of extensor hallucis longus and brevis become oblique to the long axis of the big toe. And this also tend to increase the deformity. Hallux valgus is a painful condition and in some people, this deviation is large so it can cause great toe overlap with the second toe and this cause decrease in medial longitudinal arch. This condition can cause surrounding tissue swelling, resultant pressure and friction also cause subcutaneous bursts are to form and this is called the bunion. So in this video we discussed what are the important joints in the foot and its associated ligaments. Thank you. Stay connected with Anatomy Everywhere YouTube channel.